Okay, so here we're going to talk about Neisseria gonorrhea. Now, Neisseria gonorrhea is the second most common bacterial um, sexually transmitted disease, and it's estimated we have about a million cases in the United States per year. It is a gram-negative diplococcus, um, and oftentimes it can stain inside of our mononuclear cells. So this is our um, bacteria inside of a neutrophil. You can see the low nuclei there. And it's going to have a higher incidence in sexually active adolescents and young adults, and many of the infections are asymptomatic, so you can spread it without knowing you are infected. Now, Neisseria was described by Albert Neisser in 1879, and keep in mind that syphilis was described in the 1600s. So this is a good 200 years after syphilis was discovered. This was observed in smears of um, purulent or pus exudates um, from the reproductive tract. And in the 1960s, a medium which allowed for growth of um, Neisseria in culture was developed, and it's the Thayer Martin medium. And of course, gonorrhea is known as the clap. Now, gonorrhea is again a gram negative diplococcus. It's going to be observed usually inside of our polymorphs, and therefore it can get inside of our neutrophils or macrophages, and there it can spread to other areas of the body. Um, you can have infection of non cornified epithelial cells in areas of your um, reproductive tract. Um, as well as in areas of dissemination, pharynx, conjunctiva, etc. Now your um, gonorrhea are going to be able to spread through subepithelial tissues. They are going to have virulence factors, so they have pili which can help them to attach. They divide relatively fast every 20 to 30 minutes and you're going to have toxins that are going to damage cells. So the toxins are going to break down your cells, lead to submucosal abscesses, and exudates in the lumen as well form. Now in women, gonococcal infections are going to be uh, of the cervice, cervitis, urethritis, um, proctitis, and also you can have, of course, pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, there's going to be associated with gonococcal infections, pregnancy, morbidity, and dissemination to eyes. You can also have pharyngitis with disseminated gonococcal infections. And again, many are going to be asymptomatic, so they are unaware that they have the infection. Complications are going to be with respect to um, pregnancies, infertility, you can have an atopic pregnancy, um, pelvic pain. Also, you can have a congenital infection to the fetus, and you can eventually get local invasion, systemic infection, eye infections, um, as well as co-infections with um, HIV virus. Serotitis is going to have an incubation pay, uh, period of about three to ten days. You're going to have vaginal discharge, um, difficulty or painful urination, dysuria, vaginal bleeding, and then cervical are going to be purulent, so pus exudates um, with arrhythmia. Pelvic inflammatory disease is going to um, have a tenderness with or without fever. Um, you can have a showing of inflammation, abscesses, adhesions. However, often pelvic inflammatory disease is silent and the individual doesn't uh, is not aware of any infection. Uh, there is also infection of your um, Bartolin glands. So these are the glands that are on both sides of the vaginal opening and they can become tender and swollen. Um, and the infection then, when it gets into these glands, could be dissemination to other sites as well. The Bartolin abscess is going to be painful, tender, and you could have purulent discharge. And so you can get a non-infection um, 
abscess associated with your Bartholin gland, but um, when you have your pus and purulence, that would indicate that there is an infection. Gonococcal infections of the men are going to infect their uh, reproductive tracts, epididymitis, proctitis. It can also disseminate disseminated gonococcal infection, which can lead to pharyngitis, conjunctivitis. Um, many infections, again, are going to be asymptomatic. Gonococcal urethritis is going to have an incubation of two to seven days. You're going to have an abrupt onset of severe dysuria. You're going to have a purulent pus urethral discharge. And most urethral infections are symptomatic. So this is very different than what we've been saying before of um, asymptomatic. Now, epididymitis is going to be swollen, painful, epididymitis, uh, epididymis, and you're going to have tenderness or enlargement on examination. Now, for both men and women, you can have, again, disseminated gonococcal infections. It can infect different areas of the body besides the reproductive tract, um, pharyngeal conjunctivitis, and then further dissemination. An eye infection is going to have tearing, purulent discharge, arrhythmia associated with the eye. Dissemination is going to be bacteremia, which of course just means the bacteria can be found in the blood. Um, you're going to have the pharynx um, can be involved in dissemination. And this is going to occur in uh, a small percentage of um, gonococcal infected patients, and it's going to be more common in females than males. Um, patients that have congen uh, congenital deficiencies of complement factors. Especially in C7, C8, and C9 are at high risk. Remember, this is going to form that MAC complex. And it's going to be the MAC complex of these complement components that are going to punch holes in the walls of bacteria. So um, gonorrhea is going to be very sensitive to complement, and deficiencies in complement can um, be associated with dissemination. Clinical manifestations, you could have um, dermatitis arthritis syndrome, Arthritis is in about 90% of patients. Um, this is going to be fever, chills, skin lesions. Um, and less common are you going to have inflammation of your liver, um, heart, endocarditis, meningitis, inflammation in the brain. A rash can be associated with um, disseminated um, gon um, gonorrhea. And this is going to be either macular or papular. It can also be hemorrhagic, necrotic. Um, so there can be various um, presentations. So here's disseminated gonococcal skin lesions. You can have your small, painful, mid-palmar lesion. Um, there is a necrotic, grayish lesion um, that can occur on the skin as well. Papular or pustule lesions on the foot and skin and then pustule um, lesions also just on the skin. Complications associated with pregnancy are postpartum endometrius, septic abortions, as well as um, post-abortal pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, this can have play a role in gestational bleeding, preterm labor and delivery, as well as premature ruptures of membranes.
vertical transmission uh, for neonates, you have a rate of about 30% mother to child um, during the fetus development. And of course, this can lead to eye infections, disseminated gonococcal infections, sepsis, arthritis, and meningitis. You can have scalp abscesses, um, vaginal or rectal infections, as well as pharyngeal infections of the newborn.